Sanatam Chatushpade. May Krishna keep us together until old age. May enter your husband's house with auspiciousness. Om Prajapati Vishnu Rishi Anushtup Chanda Shri Vishnu Devata Grihita Kanyapane Patyu Jape Vinyoga Om Imam Tum Vishnu Midva Suputram Saubhagam Kridi Dasasyam Putran Adehi Patim Eka Dasham Kuru So please make the count of men in the house 11. Om Samraji Swashure Bhava Samraji Swashram Bhava Nandananda Richa Samraji Bhava Samraji Adi Devrushu This is a nice one. Be the ruler of your husband's sister. Be the ruler of your husband's brother. Om Mama Vrate Te Hridyam Dadatu Mama Chittam Anu Chittam Testu Mama Vak Ek Mana Jusaswari Vishnutva Niyam Kumayam May your heart be fixed on our life's goals. May your mind follow after my mind. With body and soul, be devoted to my words. May Vishnu join us together. So, that is pretty much the end of the ceremony, or the 95% of the ceremony. Please have a seat. And uh, His Holiness Ramapad Swami is here. Perfect timing, yeah. on time. We'd like this space cleared so His Holiness Ramapad Maharaj can sit here. Uh, we need a mic for Maharaj. Hare Krishna, while we are waiting for Maharaj to start the class, I request the first batch for whom the prasadam will be serving to to be make to make your way upstairs and we also request children or any adults who are hungry to p please go and honor the prasadam and also request you to kindly mute your cell phones as the class is going on and be quiet Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namane Namaste Sarasate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Desatarine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shivasati Gaura Bhakta Vrinda That's all of you Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare I think this is the first wedding I've ever attended that was on time <laughs> Congratulations all of you Especially you too. <laughs> and compliments to whoever made these nice decorations. Who planned it? You don't know? All of us. Oh, that was a good answer. Very nice. Very nice. I was thinking as I was coming down the stairs, seeing everybody so dressed up. 
not just wearing their Sunday best, but outfits that look like peacocks or something. <laughs> little boys and little girls and moms and dads and grandparents and it's a big festive occasion, yeah? And look at me, wearing saffron. <laughs> I'm out of place here. In fact, in the very early days of the Hare Krishna movement, as a sannyasi, Prabhupada not only spoke as I'm speaking, but he did everything. He did all the mantras and procedures because there wasn't anybody else. And he would remark, normally a sannyasi doesn't do these things. But for the benefit of my disciples, I'm doing these things. <laughs> and then some time passed, and the young Western, American and European boys and girls they didn't really know what vows meant. They took vows, but they really didn't know what vows meant, and they were unable to hold their, uphold their vows. Some. Too many. And so Prabhupada stopped that practice. He didn't stop having them married, but he stopped overseeing the marriage. <laughs> and here I am presiding over or taking part in a marriage. And for those of you that are not regular participants in ISKCON, you must think this is a very unusual wedding. I've never seen anything quite like this before. When the mantras are going on, there's wonderful kirtan. I could tell the voice from the distance who was leading the kirtan. <laughs> And especially for your information, this Sankirtan, the congregational chanting of the Holy Name, is, is the primary, primary means of purification because all of an event such as this is, it's a sangskara, vivaha sangskara, it's creating an impression that's meant to endure for one's lifetime. And so, all of you have come to bless the occasion, and sacred, mant sacred mantras are being chanted. But as you know, at least Srila Prabhupada taught us, that if there's mistake in the recitation of Vedic mantra, then it won't have effect. But, this Maha mantra is so special and so merciful, simply names of the Personality of Godhead within those names of the Personality of Godhead, Nija Sarva Shaktis, all spiritual potencies are found. So everything is there. So that's really all we need is the Maha Mantra. But all the other paraphernalia and mantras and recitations and vows and so many nice things, they assist the primary to create that nice impression, that vows that are meant to be upheld. And again, for those of you that are not regular members of ISKCON, <laughs> it's a policy in our ISKCON temples that persons who are not strong devotees, different temples have precise different roles, but they don't we don't conduct initiation before the deities because they're taking vows before the deities that are meant to be upheld. And if you take a vow before the deity and you don't uphold the vow, not good. But we're very happy to have these two nice devotees take their vows of marriage before the deities because they're going to uphold their vows. I'll share with all of you something that I've been saying repeatedly to both of them. They'll be a little embarrassed to hear this, but I'll make it public. I've been encouraging them 
consistently over time that their role in this yatra is very special. They're example setters for the younger generation. Both have a younger sister, but not just their younger sister or sisters, but the whole congregation of the youth because yadyadacharati sheshtas tat tat eve torojana. Like it or not, they're in that position as from the, the families of devotees coming together in a relationship of marriage with one another and they're example setters. They may say, no, no, no. And I'm saying, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> like it or not, recognize it or not. It, it's just whatever example is set, others will look to that example. And here it is, the long-awaited, maybe too long-awaited, but long-awaited moment of <laughs> sacred marriage. And it's not just upholding vows of marriage, but all the other features of grahasta life. I'll speak about that next, but first I want to just, um, as our youth here in Chicago, for those of you that are visitors from some distant place, uh, the youth of, of our community here held a very nice function specifically to honor their parents. So I'd like to honor their parents too. Because uh, to do what both sets of parents have done is using the vernacular. It was awesome. It's, it's extraordinary. I mean, in one sense, it's, it really should be like that. But the, the forces of um, this age of Kali are very strong, and the infrastructure is not well established at all. So that both parents have achieved such wonderful accomplishment, son and daughter, initiated devotees, coming together in sacred marriage in a proper manner, becoming committed to one another in service to Krishna, and understanding that their responsibility is to be example setters for the next generation along with so uh, appreciation is my appreciation is going to the parents then I'd like to also appreciate the community and maybe name a few names but something that I very much appreciated some of you know Bhakti Tirtha Swami he's now departed from this world serving Prabhupada somewhere <laughs> But he would regularly say, from Africa, there is this saying, to raise a child takes a village. And it's true. So, it's not just mom and dad, but you, the Sangha of Vaishnavas, that help to create wonderful impressions in the hearts of the bride and groom. Looking at Premananda and her efforts when teaching Bhagavad Gita to little fidgety children for week after week and year after year, and Marari Chaitanya, who is not here with us right now, but I remember in the in the basement of the Menon's home, the kids were being educated by Mirari Chaitanya. And, you know, the adult program was over and the kids' program was still going because they just loved being with Mirari Chaitanya. You remember? How could you forget? <laughs> and so on and so on. There, you know, the, 
the, uh, the adults that participated, your mentors, another example setting feature, just by suggesting it was very easy for both of you to identify persons who, in addition to your family persons, who you could take close guidance from, and compliments to the parents of recognizing that was really helpful, was interfering, just a very nice arrangement to help your son or your daughter grow into a nice devotees. And compliments to your army of friends. We could, if you didn't know who they were during kirtan, you could hear them. Many of them seated over here, but you know, over there and all around doing different services. In a, another part of the, the family, the spiritual family, and of course, the head of the spiritual family is our founder, Acharya. Where would any of us be? Don't answer the question. Where would any of us be if it weren't for that kindness that was so liberally, freely, magnanimously given by our founder, Acharya? So this is this is an auspicious event, and we're I'm wish, I'm thinking in, in a mood of gratitude towards all of all of you who have come to make this occasion blessed and auspicious. And a little bit um, like to speak about. Um, Something I've been hearing Srila Prabhupada speak about lately in, in recorded lectures that I've been hearing. <laughs> Practically the, the, the very first instruction spoken by Shukadev Goswami, I'd like to speak about that. Because we understand the Srimad Bhagavatam is our topmost evidence or pramana the means of knowing anything, certainly the means of knowing transcendence, that which is beyond the purview of the mind and senses. But specifically, Krishna. The truths about Krishna are most perfectly disclosed in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. And Shukadeva Goswami is the speaker. But he doesn't speak until the second canto. And when he speaks in the second canto, he's responding to two questions, questions of the king, asking the two questions, what is my duty now that it is the time of death? And for that matter, what is the duty of anyone? Because he was the king thinking of the welfare of everyone. What is everyone's ultimate duty, particularly facing the moment of death? And who knows? He knew he had seven days. We don't know we have seven minutes or seven moments. So what is our duty? And then uh, the second question is, what is that subject matter that one should hear and chant and remember? Shrotavya kirti tavya shadyeya pujas janityada. That's what he wanted to know. So right away, Shukadeva Goswami is, is, he's not even wearing saffron. He's not wearing fancy clothes. He's not wearing saffron. He's wearing nothing. Clothed by the four directions. And totally detached. Totally situated beyond Brahman realization. And he comes in the midst of great sages and he doesn't even say anything and they all stand because just to be in his presence they recognize his superlative position above them all. And they provide him this elevated seat to address them all. And he begins speaking in response to the king's questions. I've just been hearing Prabhupada say this over and over again, so I had to speak it. It's appropriate. Griheshu griha medinam. 
Shrotavya Dini Rajendra Nrinam Santi Sahasrashaha Apashatam Atmatatvam Graheshu Grihamedi Nam Anyone that's heard Prabhupada speak has heard that verse, at least that phrase, Graheshu Grihamedi Nam, over and over again. It's practically the first thing that Shukadeva Goswami says. There is, Prabhupada would say, in Sanskrit there are two terms, grihasta and grihamedi. And grihamedi, griheshu, there it is, they, they're living in home, but they're grihamedi nam, they're too much attached to the affairs of household life. And this, that's a byproduct of their not attending to the hearing process. Shrotra, their, their hearing is sahasrashaha, so many, so many topics having nothing to do with the goal of life. And grahasta life, and, and th that leads to a life of sense gratification. So, Prabhupada didn't, he was blunt, he didn't make it nice. He was just very direct and blunt, a life of sense gratification. And marriage without Krishna at the center means a life of sense gratification. And that's not the purpose, that's, that's not why um, Shukadeva Goswami is speaking. It's not um, of, of interest to a transcendentalist as Shukadeva Goswami. But there is something that's of interest to a transcendentalist Shukadeva Goswami, and that interest is guiding people towards a life that's centered upon Krishna, a life of service unto Krishna, including the life of living in a home, living with husband and wife, to dedicate oneself, to assist one another in coming closer to Krishna. That's the, the transcendental purpose, <laughs> suited to one's nature, the transcendental purpose of Krishna conscious family life. I'm going to tell a little story. I'm watching the clock so I don't run over time. But, uh, one time I was um, in Delhi flying to Hyderabad. It was, and um, it was one of those mornings in January, those of you who live in North India, there's always fog in the morning in January. And they have this thing, I think it's for business people, they have all the flights leave at six or seven in the morning because they want to get to their destination, do their business and fly back at night. But there's fog in the morning so no planes can leave. They just schedule all the planes to leave and they can't leave. So the place is mayhem. And the lines to get through security is ridiculous and every, everything's, it's India. <laughs> so I was standing in line and there was a fellow is in the line in front of me and he kept looking back at me like I was Shukadev Goswami without clothes on or something. <laughs> like I was some kind of strange personality, a, a white elephant or something. <laughs> And so when I got through the security line, he was waiting, he saved a seat for me, he had me sit down, and he said, um, just a little introduction, You're, are you with the Hare Krishna movement? Yes. I've been to the Hare Krishna temple in Juhu, oh, very nice. And then, you know, he got right down to it and said, is it true that in order to make spiritual advancement, you have to give up family life? Because I like my wife. I like my child, but I've run into these people that say, I can't make any spiritual advancement unless I become a sannyasi. Is it true? And I put two and two together and said, where are you headed? Shringari Mat, that's where I'm headed. Oh, okay. So, 
we had a little discussion about Falgo Vairagya and Yukta Vairagya. I won't go into it now because it'll take a while. But our, the teaching of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who had as intimate associates both sannyasis and householders, that one may utilize what is from Hari in the service of Hari. And that's Yukta Vairagya. As long as Hari is the object of service, not just in the back seat, but he's in the front seat. He's the VIP. He's the person who we're doing this for, whatever this is, including household life. And Falgo Vairagya is that which is in relation to Hari, and we renounce it. So he said, you know, aside from I'm attached to my wife, I've, I've, I, I have this understanding, but these other people are saying these other things, so I'm, I'm confused. I've become confused. Interestingly, just as I was speaking, this devotee couple that I know, husband, wife, and their small child, came right past us, and they paid their obeisances. The little boy had his tea lock on and his bead bag, and he was... You know, he had been chanting. And I said, see, <laughs> this is Krishna conscious family life. Why don't you talk with them? I think they can open your eyes a little. Here's a practical example. Practical examples are very important. So that's why I'm speaking to both of you. Practical examples are very important because you can read about something in a book, like what is ideal grahasta life? very interesting to read about it in a book but then when you see it oh that's what it is oh now I understand it's it's stronger it's it speaks louder it's far more effective of a message carrier to see examples and so I'm you know in a public assembly repeating something that I've said privately to both of you this uh, this is your assignment. And even if I didn't say it, it's going to be the case anyways, because the younger devotees look up to the older devotees and say, oh, that's how you do it. Whatever you do, whatever you don't do, whatever you say, whatever you don't say, whatever, you, whatever your lives are made up of, that's going to set an example. And the, the example of the... Grahasta, not even, you know, ideal Grahasta, but Grahasta life, it, it, according to the, 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 the principle, is Krishna is at the center. Krishna is at the center. And whatever we do, it's with Krishna at the center. Well, that's a nice phrase. Now, how do you do it? Well, you know, what, what's, where's the boundary? What, what's outside of what's for Krishna, what's not for Krishna. That's, you, you need guidance in the teachings and how to apply the teachings in variegated situations. And so the community is there. Your parents are there and your friends are there and your guides, are, mentors are there. Your spiritual master is there. But the, you know, right in the front is, let us utilize this opportunity given I, our founder, Acharya, and the grace of Krishna, and the spiritual family of devotees to get it right and set an example. This is, this is how it's best done, at least according to our capacity. With Krishna at the center. And the way to maintain that, exactly what Shukadeva Goswami is saying, is by very carefully attending to the hearing process is how bhakti begins, is how Bhagavad Dharma works, and is how it continues. So keeping association of those who like to hear and chant and apply the message of one has heard and chanted in practical terms, create that Sangha, that culture amongst your friends and under the guidance of the elders.
then that keeps Krishna in the center. It's, it's uh, very easy to get attached. I heard a lecture by a Grahasta on this topic. It's really easy to get attached to next to nothing. Get attached to your sandals. Or Ramanujacharya showed this example that his sannyasis, they had somebody go in the sannyas ashram and move this man's dhoti to that place and then that man's dhoti to another place. And in the morning they got up and they were in a big tizzy about who took my dhoti? Who took my gumsha? It's very easy to get attached. Even you're renounced. What to speak of if you're not renounced or you're in grahasta ashram. So one should be very careful to um, dedicate oneself in a proper way to the, the example of what grahasta ashram means and keep asking the question. And if you keep asking the question, what does it mean? You'll start to get answers and then live your lives accordingly. Continue in, in the process of hearing and applying that which you've heard. And bhakti will grow and your, your happiness will grow. Your relationship with one another will grow. The contribution that you will make to the devotee society and the world at large will grow. It's a great opportunity. It's also, as Prabhupada would say, a razor's edge. Razor's edge in the sense that, you know, safety razors don't have the problem anymore, but it, it, during his time. A razor is very good, it can shave your face, but if you're not attentive, it can cut very quickly. So good opportunity is also, you must maintain attentiveness, particularly to the hearing and chanting and application of what you've heard and staying subordinate to those who are guiding you and closely supported by your good friends in Krishna consciousness. So if you start to go towards the ditch, they'll tap you on the shoulder and say, get back to the center of the road, please. So that's a nice life. It's a nice life. And you have nice friends. They'll be very kind. They'll tap you gently. But I'm sure they'll tap you if you require it. And, and even if they don't tap you, just go and consult and say, this is what's going on, what do you think? Stay in that association, Sangha of Vaishnavas, just as the, your acronym, the Sangha Initiative, it's right in line. And that the Sangha is diverse, as already spoken. You and your peer associates, you're our, you're our future leaders. And um, we're happy to see you take steps wisely, thoughtfully, in, in the direction of Krishna conscious conclusions. Keep going. Keep it up. You're doing a good job. So I'm waiting for Nityananda Pran, who's supposed to come back. And... Oh, here he is. Just say his name and he comes. Krishna. the gate to be softened? Okay. Okay. Join
Omagyana Timarandasya Gyanandana Salakaya Chakshodin Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Saha 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 Shri Chaitanya Manabhishtam Stapitam yena bhutale Sayam rupakadamayam Dadati svapadantikam Saha 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 Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Pada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavangscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganatam Anvitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishaka Anvitangscha Svaha 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 Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Samin Itti Namine Namaste Sarasate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschachate Satarine Saha 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 Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Iti Namine Sri Varshabhana Vidhevi Dayataya Kripabdhaye Krishna Sambhanda Vigyana Dayane Prabhave Namaha Madhur Yojvala Premadhyaya Shri Rupanuga Bhaktida Shri Gaura Karuna Shakti Vigrahaya Namostate Namaste Gauravani Shri Murtaye Dinatarine Rupa Nuga Virudha Apasiddhanta Dvanta Harine Saha 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 Namo Gaura Kishoraya Sakshad Vairagya Murtaye Vipra Lambara Sambodhe 
Padam bho jayate namaha Saham 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 Namo bhakti vinodaya Satchita nanda namine Gaura shakti sarupaya Rupa nuga varayate Saham 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 Gaura vira bhava bhumeshtam Nirdeshta sajjana priyaha Vaishnava sarva bhama Shri Jagannatha yate namaha Saham 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 Vanja kalpatarubhyascha Kripa sindho bhya evacha Patita nam pavane bhyo Vaishnava bhyo namo namaha Saham 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 Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prima Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gauratvashe Namaha Saham 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 Pancha Tattvatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam Bhakta Vataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam Saham 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 He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Saham 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 Jayatam Suratel Pangor Mama Manda Matir Gati Mat Sarvasvapadam Bojo Radha Madana Mohano Saham 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 Divya Vrindaranya Kalpa Drumadaha Srimad Ratnagara Singhasana Stav Srimad Radha Shri Lagovinda Devo Heshtani Bhi Sevya Manos Marami Saha 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 Shri Man Rasa Rasaram Bhi Vangshi Vata Tata Stataha Karshan Venus Vanayar Gopir Gopinatha Shri Estunaha Saham 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 Tapta Kanshana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavanishari Rishabhano Sate Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Saham 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 Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Saham Saham 
Swaham Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Saham 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 It's almost over. Last mantra? Please stand. Namo Brahmanya Devaya Go Brahmana Hittaya Cha Jagat Hittaya Krishnaya Go Vindaya Namo Namaha Saha 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 Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So that officially completes the wedding ceremony. Hari Hari so I know all of you are eagerly waiting to, I guess, uh, greet and give the couple your uh, blessings. Where would you like to go in the temple room? Yeah. So you, you, can, you can come, come meet them, I guess, give them your blessings, your gifts, etc. They'll be here for some time. You're welcome to come and uh, the photographers can uh, orchestrate how they want them to stand and all that. So we are officially done. Thank you. Uh, it's a great event. Somehow both sets of parents uh, made it happen. I'm sure there were a lot of sleepless nights, this and that. But uh, finally, the wonderful Yagya is done. Congratulations to both of you. And congratulations to both of you as well. Hare Krishna. Krishna.